So, I'm uh, jumping on a bandwagon. Normally, that goes something like this. And for all I know, maybe this time it will still go like that. Because after all, life's busy and I'm a mom and life is busy and, well, did I mention life is busy? So you may have heard by now of the historical Disney theme that is going around in the costume community and I decided I wanted to jump on that bandwagon. I searched far and wide, long and hard for what Disney character I wanted to do. After much deliberation, I landed on Megara from Hercules, because she's awesome. And I thought she was the only one left that hadn't been done yet, or so I thought. As you all know, my thing is the 1920s, so of course it's going to be 1920s Meg. Now I think the 1920s and ancient Greece are a good match, crossover wise, because now I can do something that I've been wanting to do for quite some time, haven't gotten around to it yet. I'm getting drapey with it. Okay, this involved a little bit of draping. And a heck ton of tiny hand sewed rolled hems. Yeah, never doing that again. Ever. I hand sewed almost the entire dress. And I do love me some hand sewing, but those tiny, tiny rolled hems nearly undid me. So yeah, not a fan. And yeah, that's kind of the extent of what I wanted to say, so let's get the sewing. This is my initial design. I ended up deviating from it a little bit, as you will see later on in the video. And these are the rough sketches I did trying to figure out what to do with the pattern pieces. I went for the option on the right eventually, and I used the belt as kind of a foundation piece, the piece upon which the rest of the dress is built, so to speak. The top is sort of like a bat wing sleeve kind of thing. <laughs> Don't really know how to explain it. Oh, hi, yes. Yes, that's your dress. Yes. Cute. You're adorable. The belt is extremely simple, just a long rectangle. I splurged on some gorgeous purple silk and here's me pulling a thread out of said silk so as to create a straight line for me to cut along. This method is called thread pulling. As mentioned before, this dress is almost entirely hand sewn. The only bit of machine sewing that I did was here on the belt and sash pieces. Now I basically folded the long silk rectangle that I had in half and then stitched along the outer edges. I then turned it inside out and hand stitched the edges closed. Unfortunately, I had miscalculated slightly and the belt turned out way too large. I solved this by turning the edges of the belt back upon itself and then hand stitching those closed. On to the sash. The sash piece is equally simple. Just a long, narrow, rectangular piece of fabric folded in half with the ends cut off diagonally. I did one end freehand, then folded the edge over so I could trace the diagonal onto the other end and cut that too. I didn't film the cutting out of the top pattern pieces, but that was me in the car on the road to grandma, beginning to realize that hand sewing a bunch of tiny rolled hems on flimsy, fluttery fabrics was in fact a bad idea. Fast forward to a million years later, where I finally finished the hems of the top and am assembling the top and belt. So two things have become clear to me. One, I will have to gather the fabric of the top a little bit so it will fit into the belt. And two, I was too hasty in sewing the snaps on. It's not 
that it's so much work, it's just that I really, really hate sewing in snaps. But anyway, I got over myself and started basting the top to the belt. Just had a little test session to see how the gathered fabric sits when you wear it. But I'm not entirely convinced that I did the right thing because as you can see, it's kind of doesn't sit quite right here. So I'm going to take the gathers, I'm going to unpick the, I am going to unpick the basting stitch and gather it at the very edges and maybe let the edges overlap a little bit to see if I can't do it like that because I think that it would be best if it there are no gathers in the middle and have the gathers off to the side a little bit more so that the middle sort of floofy bit will hang nice without any folds or creases. So, at least now we know what not to do. That approach did indeed work a lot better. And I'm not showing you yet, you'll have to stick around until the review. Please stick around until the review. And now, you guessed it, more thread pulling and more tiny rolled hems. The bottom part of the dress is, as we've seen in my masterful diagram sketch, a large rectangle. See, this is why I love the 1920s so much and why I think it's a great period for sewers who want to try their hand at drafting their own patterns. The pattern pieces of some of the dresses are so bloody simple. And in a surprising turn of events, I did actually film how I sewed the rolled hems. It's quite possibly the most boring material to ever find its way onto my hard drive, but here you go. I didn't use a specific method or anything, just jumped straight in and did what felt right. Why on earth did I think sewing this all by hand was a good idea? I am so sick of this. I never have to sew another rolled hem by hand again, it will be too soon. You better believe the next time I'm gonna have to sew a rolled hem, it's gonna be by machine. Cause this is killing me. As I progressed with the hemming, I used the method of basting a tiny folded over piece of hem into place and then commencing with the actual hem stitching. It seems like more work, but it did make the hem stitching go faster. So in the end, I think it might not have been all that much extra time. What you see me working on here is the third attempt at a headband. I started on a purple headband made out of the same silk as the belt, when I realized that Meg's ponytail band thing isn't purple but gold bronzish. So I threw what I was working on aside and tried making one out of gold fabric, which I hated. I went online to hunt for inspiration and found it in this beautiful picture of silent film star Constance Talmadge. I thought, if only I can get my hands on some gold wire, I can perhaps try to recreate those beaded flowers and leaves. It was time for a trip to the craft store. Trip to the craft store with kids. Hobby store. Here we go. I'm good with kids. I did what I probably should have done in the first place and ordered the supplies online, which I do not regret because chocolate.
yeah, so this is a new thing. I'm, I mean, normally I don't talk about things after I've shot the review. It's just like, but by now, fade to black. But I felt more needed to be said about this dress. Am I happy with it? Does it fit me right? That sort of thing. Well, I am happy with it. But it doesn't fit me quite right anymore. I seem to have managed to somehow lose more weight. And now the belt sort of slips over my bum. Which isn't supposed to happen. And I'm not happy about it. Oh, itchy nose. So yeah, there's that. And I guess this could be easily solved by taking in the belt. As in moving the snaps a little bit. But oh, you all know how much I hate sewing in snaps. So I'm just going to hang it up and pray and hope that by the time I wear it next, I will have gained a little bit more weight and it will sit as it is supposed to. This dress was one of the easier dresses I have ever made as far as sort of like glitzy, glamorous, bowl gowny things go. It wasn't difficult at all. And I've mentioned this earlier, but I will repeat it because I feel it needs repeating. The 1920s is a really good place to start your costuming journey if you're a beginner sewer. Or even if you're not a beginner sewer and you just want a place to start that isn't too intimidating and difficult. 1920s, all the way. Yeah, so that's just my, my personal opinion. Oh god, my hair. <gasps> okay, so I did shoot a reveal two weeks ago, but I just put everything on again and shot some more pictures for the thumbnail, the YouTube thumbnail because um, my husband took some pictures but he took them under the carport and there was this really weird shadow right on top of the dress that wasn't gonna cut it so I had to go and shoot some new thumbnail footage which will hopefully come out well because my phone has issues I managed to drop it the screen burst and now it will focus correctly so I'm hoping I will have some useful material at least Anyway, overall, I'm pretty happy with this dress. I mean, I decided to forego the, the fibulae and just do some, I don't know if you can see it, just do some gold bead detailing, I, which I really like. And I was thinking, should I have maybe done some more bead detailing over here? I think it would not look so good when the dress is like, like this, as opposed to this, but I can't very well keep it in place so, no, no, I'm glad I didn't go for the bead detailing over here. The belt, I'm pretty happy with the construction of the belt. It's a fairly simple idea, it's, it's just really a large rectangle with snaps. And still, that's what the whole dress is sort of resting on. I mean, it's like the base construction piece of the whole dress. It, it's what holds it all together. And I'm pretty chuffed with how that turned out, so yeah. On the whole, I feel, oh my god, my hair. I feel this was a good addition to my 1920s wardrobe and a good addition to my wardrobe period. I mean, I hope I get some wear out of it because it's not something that you wear all the time, but God, I feel so glamorous in it, it because of the drapiness and it's just so, the fabric is so nice and smooth, it's a nightmare because it wrinkles like at the drop of a hat. So I had to steam this thing within an inch of its life before I wore it. But it's, oh man, it's, it feels very luxurious and, and glamorous and I love it. I love it. The color, yeah, I just, I really love everything about it. The tiny rolled hems came out pretty good as well. Not sure if I'm still gonna do them by hand next time. What I really want is one of those tiny hemming foot thingies for my sewing machine that makes like really good crisp rolled hems. I think that would be a good investment if I decide to do something like this again. But still, I'm kind of proud of myself for hand sewing it all. So on the whole, I would say this was a very enjoyable project, this historical Disney costume thing. And it almost makes me want to make some more. Or maybe hope that it will become an annual thing or something. Or, you know. Because I have plans. But those are for another video. In the meanwhile, thank you for watching. If you want to support me, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Or consider making a donation to my Ko-Fi account. See you next time. Bye! Mwah. 
Yeah, so the stripes aren't horizontal, I know this, but if you want to talk about it in the comments, feel free. Because after all, life's busy. Because life's busy. Because life's busy. Because life is busy. Yeah. Maybe I should have thought this through before I started recording. <laughs>